Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Philip Nafziger. What you're about to see is a condensed version of a full length series available at buildingexpertsinstitute.com. Thanks a lot to Bluebird Roofing for helping make this video possible. Enjoy. You want to hang this past the edge of the gutter apron, three quarters of an inch, ideally. And then for fasteners, you want to put those about two to three inches up from the bottom. I try to visualize where the top of the gutter apron is and shoot my nails right in line with that just to help me uh, keep track of where I'm at. And notice I put gaps right there. Those are the gaps where my shingles are gonna land in between my nails. I wanna make sure I don't put a nail right here and then have a shingle splice right on the nail. Once again, I want to make sure that if I'm putting any nails in the valley region that I'm at least six inches away from that center line. So I've got those nails and that nail, those nails and that nail far enough outside of that valley. And you want to extend the starter strip one foot past on either side. That's good on our starter strip. Let's go ahead and put our first course of shingles on. And I like to put this one on and then put the one in the valley so that I can square up my edge here to ensure that when it goes across the valley, it will be square. I put two nails at an angle with the angle of the valley about six to eight inches away, push down in the valley, then put two nails there. I'm gonna quickly give you a practical walkthrough of what the starter strip is and why it's important. If we put the shingles on without any starter strip, this is what it's gonna look like. I'll leave that gap right there just for visual purposes. But if, if this is what the shingles look like once they're on, water's gonna get in this gap right there and the starter strip goes underneath to protect that from getting any water to that area. So we need to make sure that our starter strip is always covering these laps properly. And then another purpose of it that's very important is to make sure that the first course of shingles doesn't catch wind and blow off. The starter strip has this sealant strip right here that goes on the bottom and it connects and bonds with the shingles. That will keep it from catching wind and it makes it nice and solid along the edge of the roof. With, uh, you have to be careful because the starter strip is a different dimension than the shingle itself. So what I'll do is I'll put one on and tack it in place with two nails that are high and out of the way. And I'll put my shingle on where it's gonna go. And that gives me a guide. I know not to put any nails right in that area. So I'll skip that area. And the rest of the starter is free game because it's getting covered by the next shingle. I can drop that down like that. The GAF specifications for starter strip is to have it hanging past the drip edge one quarter to three quarter of an inch. That's the variance. So our target is gonna be half inch. 
and if I pull my tape measure to the edge of the sealant strip, it's right at about three quarter. So I'm gonna hug the outside of the sealant strip and that's gonna give me about that perfect one half inch target. With that being said, finishing out this course down on the bottom, I'm gonna hang this shingle over three quarter or uh, half inch. Go ahead and nail it in place. And now when I start up the rake edge, I'm gonna drop it down to the edge of that sealant strip. And that's gonna give me nice sealant strip all the way to the edge of that corner to ensure that this shingle on the edge is gonna be sealed down nice and tight all the way to the corner. Running your starter strip up the rake is a little bit easier than down at the bottom because you don't have to worry about a shingle uh, landing in one of your keyways. So you're just putting it to where it's about a half inch across and evenly spacing six nails. And once again, I'm still trying to aim for the edge of my drip edge, which is approximately two to three inches from the edge. Just like that. As soon as your first course of shingles is down, now we can pop our chalk lines. The reason we do chalk lines is to keep everything straight, especially when you have something like this to work around. So we're gonna put our shingles up this edge, then we're gonna go and put our shingles up on that edge, and we need to make sure that when we get to the top, they come across to meet at the same place. Your, um, your spacing on what you chalk these lines at is going to vary based on the type of shingle you're using, but these measurements work really well for the five and five eighths exposure of the GAF shingle. We're using 22 and a half or 45 inches as our chalk line spacing. Sometimes uh, in the, the smaller, more detailed areas, you wanna do that 22 and a half a little bit tighter. On a larger, more open area, you can definitely get away with the larger measurement of 45. I want to make sure that I'm hitting my lines in this area. A smaller section like this is actually easy to get off on. So I'm going 22 and a half here, all the way up. Like that. This, this area is more open. So I'm gonna go at the 45 measurement on this side. Okay. All right, we've done a lot of great groundwork in preparation for our next video, which is gonna be installing the shingles. Thanks for watching. Remember, this was a condensed version of a full length video available at Building Experts Institute. Link in the description below. I've got some more videos for you here to watch and don't forget, like, subscribe, and share. It helps me make more content like this. Thanks.